Welcome to Second Take, the show that takes a look at the issues behind the news. South Africa is entering a new political era as President Jacob Zuma leaves the scene. Terence Creamer joins me to talk about what the change means for business. Hi Terence. Hi Chanel. What do you think business expects from this new era? Well, I think uh, business again wants to renew its partnership with government uh, and it wants policy certainty and it wants a sense of pragmatism given the state that of the economy we really are punching well below our weight as an economy. And, and I think on the partnership front, I think there's really been a breakdown over the last, uh, last while for many years, but there was a sort of a re-coming together when Prabhin Gordon was uh, brought back, to, back into um, as finance minister after the axing of uh, Klantlanene and, and there was a sense of working together, but that really uh, evaporated after the, um, the, the la last cabinet reshuffle. And um, I think the, the, that partnership is going to be very important for, for government and for society because, you know, I think if you look at government finances, they stretch the limits. And if we're going to uh, um, lean on any pillar in society for, to grow again and to develop and to deal with our mm -hmm. social problems, it's going to really have to be the private sector. So without partnership, uh, I think that's the key pillar that, uh, that, that business is going to want to see restored. The second, very much linked to that, is a policy certainty. Uh, we've gone through too many years now where uh, policy has been left uh, uncertain and there's been lingering doubts about how um, willing government is to engage in a pragmatic program uh, of policy to get the economy growing. I think we, we can think particularly in the mining space where there's been really very serious policy uncertainty which has really rendered the mining sector the, the sector that this economy was built on, uninvestable for the last few years. So th we need to put in sort of a line in the sand and get over, uh, over that uncertainty. But there's many other areas where there's been lingering uncertainty, um, being the, ener the energy space being one with the renewable energy program, with these continual debates around an unaffordable nuclear program. So that, I think, is the other important thing that business will be expecting. And the third, I think, is a sense of pragmatism. So, you know, we, we really are, as I say, we in a very difficult position from a, a public finance perspective and from a growth perspective. And I think we have to have a, a sense of, you know, dealing with the reality as we find it, not dealing with the reality as we'd like to find it. And we have to tackle our problems pragmatically. And I think those are sort of the three Ps as I would see it, that government would be expecting in this new era. What is Cyril Ramaphosa offering? Well, I think that actually it aligns very quite, quite nicely with those, those uh, objectives of business or the, what the desires of business. I think here, again, we, we're going to hear more at the State of the Nation this week as to what his uh, sort of big framework will be. But I think we can take our lead from the, the January 8th statement, which was delivered on uh, January 13th where policy certainty was definitely a big item on the agenda, as was a pact, a social pact, I think, is how the de dep then Deputy President, uh, sort of, uh, or the President of the ANC sort of framed it, a, p a social pact between business, government and labor to get together again, to partner in uh, sort of getting South Africa back on a, or rekindling growth and development in South Africa, uh, without which we're going to really uh, struggle to deal with our poverty and our unemployment and our other social problems so and the inequality that persists. So I think that, again, gels quite neatly uh, with, uh, with what uh, business would want. And then I think, uh, thirdly, the pragmatism for Sura Raposa also is about uh, holding the ANC together, and I think business would appreciate that. So I think there's going to be a, still a, a strong emph emphasis on transformation, on the racial dynamics of the economy on uh, getting the uh, getting that transformation ball rolling in a, in a way that is really broad based and I think that's the big difference I think when we hear uh, the issues around radical socio-economic transformation or when we hear the words transformation it's going to have a different meaning which is a shift in emphasis from a, a meaning that really became known or felt where it was about uh, the predatory elite uh, using that uh, radical economic transformation as a way to really feather their nest to one where I think the emphasis is going to try and be 
around a transformation that is really broad-based and is benefiting uh, more people rather than the narrow-based transformation we've had to date. What are the risks posed to an economic recovery? Well, funnily enough, the one that comes to mind immediately is the Cyril dividend <laughs> to the RAND, the Cyril Ramaphosa dividend to the RAND. The recovery has been very strong, and you know I think it's at a time when almost the fundamentals don't justify this, the RAND strength that it is at. It's obviously a confidence booster, and there's some positive sides to that. But I think if you look at the, the real economy, so the people that are on the farms, the factories, and the mines, uh, this strong RAND is, is, is quite a difficult uh, um, part of the economic equation for them to deal with. And it's, made the, it's really made their competitiveness much lower. And in many cases, for instance, in the gold and platinum space, having um, uh, this sort of level of currency is going to make profitability almost impossible. So I think there's, there's that is a risk. And, um, you know, we obviously, as South Africans, we, it's a proxy <laughs> for how the, how the politics has been going. Um, and uh, so we are, have been sort of cheering as the RAND has strengthened, as the, the Zuma era has come to an end. But I think, on the other hand, we, it, it, fundamentally, it's possibly at a level where a lot of our local businesses are going to struggle. And, you know, if, if we're wanting to have an, a, a reindustrialization of the economy, I think this RAND level is going to be quite challenging for manufacturing, for mining and for agriculture, but anyone who's really not based on the import side of the economy. So obviously imports are going to be much cheaper and there'll be a, maybe there'll be definitely a help, helpful in terms of inflation and keeping the inflation in check. But in terms of really rebuilding uh, those productive sectors, this is a difficult level. So that is, uh, sort of a dividend. I think is one of the risks. The other thing is the upcoming budget. <coughs> now we know that the public finances are uh, in an absolute mess. We know that uh, the budget itself is probably going to be quite um, punitive uh, all round. So there's going to have to be a combination of t t uh, spending cuts, which obviously affects the poor the most, and it's going to also have to be tax hikes, which is going to affect the middle class and the, the rich. And that those tax hikes in particular can have a dampening effect on the ability of the consumer economy and the consumer to sort of help uh, rekindle growth in the uh, in the economy. So it's going to be something that we're going to have to watch closely. So the remedies in the budget to closing these massive um, problems, these big deficits, and not allowing further uh, further slippage, um, is going to be watched very closely by rating agencies and other and others although I think that the rating agencies are going to be much more comfortable given what's happened in the political uh, s space and are probably going to give us a little bit of breathing room, but that's, you know, that we don't know. But for, for definite, you know, in closing these gaps, this balance between cuts and, um, and taxes is, is going to be a, a striking the correct one there because you don't want to make this a growth zapper, this budget. It's already going to hurt growth either way but I think you, uh, it's going to be about a balance of trying to make sure that it's the, the least growth impinging whatever we do in the budget next week. So that's another big risk. And then the third, and there, there are many others, but the third is uh, this navigation of unity versus reform in the African National Congress and how that translates, uh, that working that tightrope translates into, say, for instance, cabinet appointments and into policy certainty, bringing that policy certainty now, society wants that to happen f sooner and faster, at a, and not at a pace that we saw with the way the, 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 re the recall of President Zuma took place. It was too slow for society. We can't afford that. We need decisiveness. We need to have that reform now taking precedence over, uh, over the unity in some ways. And I think uh, in, ma in many ways, probably internally, the, the tediousness of the process that the ANC undertook has maybe helped in terms of that uh, getting, you know, ticking that unity box. But I think for society and the economy and for business and for confidence, we really need the focus now to shift to the reform element of that two-pronged strategy uh, within the ANC. And if it doesn't decisively shift that way, I think that's the third big risk amongst many others. <laughs> I'm not even talking about the cleaning up uh, that has to happen 
not, not only you know, the big arrests and things like that, but the cleanup that has to happen in governance and state-owned enterprises and all that. There are many hurdles in the way. Um, but I think there, there is an opportunity here to start again. Uh, we've, South Africans are living through probably a second, this is a second big opportunity. We all lived through it, in, and many of us lived through it in 1994. But uh, this is definitely an opportunity to, to revive South Africa, uh, re-establish this reputation as somewhere that you want to do business with. And also its reputation and moral standing in the world. I think there's an opportunity. But there are many headwinds, there's many risks, and it's going to be uh, interesting to see um, as, uh, how this all unfolds. But I think there's definitely a lot of optimism and excitement, but it's a balance this time, unlike maybe 1994, with a high degree of impatience. And people are impatient for change, they want to see it. And I think that's what we're going to be wanting to see from the state of the nation and for, for the first few weeks and months of the Cyril Ramaphosa presidency. Thank you. That's the second take show for this week. Thank you for watching and join us again next time for more news analysis.